e ma le ni beyen o nile loko e siku dede asiko yi hello everyone it's adironke again i hope your day is going well today i'd like to talk about ori and stress on what it is you may have already heard some of the things that i'm going to be mentioning in my previous video or in previous videos but there's really no way to talk about ori without mentioning them so that is why i intend to touch on those things as you can already tell from the title in and of itself ori is not head <laughs> um in translation you can say head but because this part of the body is called head in the english language and this part of the body is called ori in the yoruba yoruba language doesn't really mean that the translations are the same or what is thought of this part of the body is the same it doesn't really mean that there's a similar world view if i call this something and you call it another thing and we both know that you know if we're if we mention what it is in our respective languages or in the respective words that we choose this is what we're talking about doesn't necessarily mean that we see it the same way or we use it for the same purpose or we think the importance is similar is what i'm trying to say is the the world view regarding each regarding this is so different and so even in and of itself the word just looking at the word itself let's not even get that far into the philosophy just yet even looking at the word itself it's not head you know um i was trying to see what head really means i was saying this in the previous in and of itself video that uh, sometimes even people who are english because the english language is sort of <laughs> I really don't know what word to use, but because it is heavily reliant on other languages, many times English speakers don't even know what they are saying in and of uh, saying really, you know, deeply. If a word is like head, when I checked the dictionary, um, saw the definition and this was what was pointed out to be the the root of the word i don't know if this is effort i don't know how it would have been said in old english um but it, it has germanic roots so we can thank the germans for the word head um so it moved over uh from old english uh, from uh G G german to old english effort and hoofed <laughs> in dutch i don't know i might be saying rubbish or out <laughs> i don't know how this is said in german but essentially this is how we got the word head and i did a google translate thing to confirm but who knows what hoofed really means in and of itself and who knows what out oh, out <laughs> i don't know who knows what this is in and of itself we use words and i think i don't know if i'm <laughs> i don't know if i'm just a crazy one or something but i really wonder about words and especially with the english language that i'm not all too familiar with as far as like it, its roots is concerned like to really understand the English language and to really enjoy it, you have to know Latin, you have to know German, you have to know Italian, you have to know French, you have to know Dutch, you have to know basically all the languages that it, it fits. It's just like a pseudo language. It feeds off this many different languages before it, its vocabulary can come together. So to really enjoy that kind of language, you have to know all these other languages. Um, I'm saying all that to say that is this is what it is. I can't really go any further because I only speak English. But Ori is <laughs> Ori is different 
you know ori let's break down ori let's see what ori is in and of itself o o is a noun maker so you can there are, you can i think almost all the vowels i think even all including u in ijesha um vowels are placed in front of verbs with differing tone marks most commonly either do or re to form a noun to form a noun so this is the noun maker here and this is the verb this is the central verb in the word ori you can translate this o as the thing that when it serves as a noun maker this is what this is essentially what it means it might just be a letter or just be a syllable but this is what it's inferring to it's inferring if you're going to translate it to english the thing that or the thing that is used to or the the one who or sometimes the one that is you the one that or actually the one who the one who works anyway any one of these three works re is c at its most basic level but it is also experience when you see something you tend to experience it when you see something you in a different context discover it when you see something in another context you may have found it so all these are words that are inferred via the word see so now that we know what these two parts are we can eliminate and it, it can't possibly be the one who uh it can be but i'm just going to stick with the thing that for for now it can also be a uh, visit or attend to if i say worry me worry me nile come and see me and it's not just to look at me you know come and visit me or attend to this or basically i'm asking for your attention i'm not just asking you to look at me and leave um attention is also inferred when you say come and see me you know luckily um in the english language that also worry me also works in the english language come and see me also lets you know that it's much more than just look at me so i guess <laughs> that's a that's a random similarity uh but yeah so you can say ori is the thing that sees or experiences or discovers or finds you can say that ori is the thing that sees and in seeing it's the thing that experiences it's the thing that discovers it's the thing that finds and there are physical and spiritual aspects to it there are physical and spiritual aspects to it um the physical aspect would involve our thinking uh our memories um our thoughts ideas the brain just everything that goes on here the spiritual is especially pertaining just to this current lifetime that would be the physical so the memories that we acquire here and the thoughts and the what we know what comes to our mind um the spiritual would be like the i yourself the i yourself is if you're somewhat familiar to what the idea of the i yourself is then you're one step towards uh one step close to understanding what the spiritual ori is the i yourself the one that is grander and greater you know not just the one that happens in this body but even far beyond you know the one that it's like this ori acquires memories and lessons and learns things here but what is actually learned from here and all the memories and all the lessons would somewhat be transferred to the spiritual ori 
so that we can develop our souls. So this is the physical and this is helping us here in this sphere as who we are currently. But ultimately it's for the betterment of the higher self, the spiritual Ori. It's um it's a complex teaching. It's it, actually it's not that complex, but it can be complex if you really want to dig further. And I was thinking of how to explain it when I made the video on Ashe. I know that a lot of people did not like not a lot. <laughs> okay, I just exaggerated, but uh maybe some people may not have liked the me using um chakras as a way of teaching because <laughs> it's like why are you using um this philosophy to teach this you but i suppose this is because of, this is because of my south asian past life um it was just really convenient <laughs> and really comfortable to use chakras as a way of explaining it i really went into detail i'm glad that people like the video i don't know for some reason i always go by like <laughs> i don't know maybe it's just in my head i just thought maybe people didn't really like the chakras thing but i don't it wasn't that overwhelming you know maybe one or two com comments does not total the number of people that watch anyway i'm talking too much um the crown chakra what you can call the ori it's not quite the same but this is a way of explaining it because people are quite familiar with chakras in this day and age the ori is greater and grander and we put more attention on our ori than any other part of our body and any of our bodies and any other aspects of our being because it is where this thing call it crown chakra if you if you if you if that helps you bring it bring, bring yourself closer to it this aspect of ourself because it is located here with we, we pay attention to this part this controls our realization awareness and management of every other aspect of our being call the other aspects of our being the six i beg your pardon call the other aspects of our being the six other chakras if you will and i um sort of went on by saying yeah see the these are the six the root which involves the family and social belonging, the sacral chakra, the solar plexus, the art, the truth, the third eye, and then Ori. It's really not the best way to explain it <laughs> on second thought. It's really not the best way, but if I attempt to explain it in Yoruba, it will sound redundant because I don't know. You still may not get it, but this is quite visual. If I said I started with your third eye, this is this the ori that tells you that tells you what to what to, what to think, how you know what your intuition should be. It is the ori that puts thoughts here. So what is most likely going to happen? You know, sometimes based based on facts, sometimes based on just past life memory so based on several things this is the ori that says that transmits so if your ori is not balanced this is not balanced if your ori is not balanced none of the others the others is balanced the the ways that it would be different would i think even in uh south asian philosophy i think in do uh hinduism as well is i think if one chakra is not balanced the rest are also, mm, the rest are some, maybe not significantly affected. Actually, no, maybe not all that affected. But in the Yoruba philosophy, if the Ori is, is um, in, in disarray, just forget about the rest. They're in disarray as well. If your Ori is not balanced, you will say the wrong things 
to the to people you should not speak to that way you know you will say the wrong things um you will get into trouble if your aura is not balanced your heart will put you into trouble not only would you love the wrong person you know you will not know what boundaries are you will not know even how to exhibit love properly if you want to love so i think that is why even the idea of love languages exists it's like okay i love you and i love you and i love you but it is your ori that tells you oh okay maybe this is this person's love language and if you really think you're loving them that way maybe you're not <laughs> maybe this is how to go about it for the for the sacral chakra like the personality the self-esteem if the ori is not balanced i <laughs> i said it in that video that if your ori tells you ah what uh you're such a you're such a dumb person that is how you will act that is what your self-esteem would be if this is not right <laughs> see how i'm eating my head if this is not right actually i didn't really eat myself that hard it was just a tap <laughs> if this is not balanced um, you would think ah, nobody likes me. No, I, I suppose that would be hard. Uh, the uh, the heart, the ability to ah, nobody likes me. Nobody. If this is not balanced, you would think ah, I'm nobody. I'm not useful <laughs> to this earth. I'm not serving any purpose. I'm a waste of space. If this is not balanced, the rest are messed up. If this is not balanced, you can't make money. The idea to make is not just working, 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 working. Oh, my root chakra is so balanced and everything is so balanced. Or oh, my family, my foundation. If your aura is not balanced, you can't really relate with your family members properly. You can't really make money properly. You will just that is even if you can do basic tasks. You oh basic things well you might be able to do basic tax ta tasks but you may not be able to get the the reward for them so if your already doesn't tell you uh excuse me you're not supposed to be a singer <laughs> why not just take some time and think you would do better off as a dancer if your already doesn't tell you that then you're going to waste probably years singing when you're not supposed to be singing when you're supposed to be dancing you will not feel fulfilled in it it would be a complete waste of waste of you may not even get paid enough for it i mean <laughs> paid enough that is even if you get paid you know so um in the yoruba philosophy the what you will call the crown chakra in um i think in in salvation philosophy other chakras can be fine if the crown is not working well. I think each chakra can be like, oh, uh, meditation for my throat chakra. My other chakras are fine, but I don't even think so. I think one, once one falls out, actually, you can correct me on that. I'm not sure. I think it, it really depends on the guru, on the teacher. Some will tell you that the others can be fine. Some will sort of insinuate that if one is out of alignment, the other others are out of alignment as well. Like once the role is destabilized, then the rest are just, I really don't know. So tell me if you know, but see, I still don't know how to explain it well, but I hope at least you pick something from what I said, that theory is the one that manages Everything it is the ori that tells you how to feel, how to love properly, properly in alignment with your purpose. It is the ori that tells you what to think or what to consider as far as intuition is concerned, what to do. If you have intuition and you don't really do anything with it, you don't know how to process it. Okay, I feel like you just feel you and you don't know how to apply it you you don't know how to practicalize it or present it logically then it's just a it's just a waste it's a waste if you if your ori doesn't tell you this is how to present yourself this is what to say this is not what to say 
then you will just say rubbish. Your words will not really have any impact on, on anybody. I think this is, that is why we stress on the Ori very much. If your Ori doesn't tell you how to love properly, you will love, 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 love until you're maybe taken advantage of. Your, your Ori isn't telling you, ah, excuse me, this is this love is not requited. Can you back out? It's out of, of alignment. Every other thing in your life is out of alignment. So, um, just like the, just like the crown chakra, just like you can find similarities between Ori and what is considered the crown chakra in, uh, South Asian philosophy in, in Hinduism specifically, Ori also contains a wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It is in the Ori that wisdom is processed. First, we know it is through the Ori that we know, and it is through the Ori that we understand, and it is through the Ori that we can extract wisdom from what we know and what we understand what we know to be. So our thoughts, our memories, our ideas, our intuition, our sense of judgment all come from here. And that is why it is so, so important. Um, so basically you can call the Ori the thing that experiences and discovers. That is its purpose. It's the, this is the physical Ori. There's also the greater Ori that surpasses a current lifetime. That surpasses me as Runke in this sphere. There's, there's, there's also a greater, greater me than this person just sitting <laughs> with this particular gender and this particular skin color and this particular frame. There's also a greater aspect to it, which is this, the spiritual Ori. So it's the main subject. Our earthly experience revolves around it. It is the main, I think our ancestors, um, were indeed scientists because I think I noted that it's like, even before we sort of came to understand what the brain is, what the capacity is, how other parts of our body, our veins, our blood and everything somewhat all work with this. Our ancestors knew that even before like biology and um, what are maybe some physics and maybe chemistry as well, even before, especially biology, even before, you know, scientists started to literally invest and countries started to invest in, you know, things like, oh, the mind, the mental health, the, you know, mental, it has to be in alignment for, and I can see there's, it's being stressed on at work now and everything. You have to give your, the Yoruba people credit for just how much work they did to realize that it's not here that the most important aspect of the body is, or it's not here, or it's not, uh, here on the back or on the waist it's not here on the arm it's here you would give them some credit for that they they really did their work and it, it checks out scientifically centuries after millenniums after it checks out other things clearly as well it's our main subject our earthly experience revolves around it so i'm i'm living i'm eating i'm doing things i'm Ultimately, the main subject is this, is my Ori. If I taste something and it doesn't taste good, it is something that my Ori has to keep in mind. And maybe in this incarnation, I don't like this, or maybe I shouldn't take any more of this, or it revolves around this. This is where everything is stored. Our memories, hurts, ideas, Okay, I've come to earth to do certain things. This is where 
all the the things that I know many things that come to me uh, intuitively I mean I to think of it I've not really gone out of my way to learn a lot of the things that I teach I'm not I don't really have time to read very much anymore <laughs> because I'm working full-time I don't um, I, I've not really, but certain things just come to me uh, intuitively, you know. The idea of what I'm supposed to do here, what my purpose is, revolves around this main subject. This is where I get it from. This is what is at work. Um, it's the main, our memories, our thoughts, our memories that we apply, our thoughts, the ideas that we use, to survive on this in this sphere on this planet uh what else did i mention in the, our sense of judgment um what else is that? our intuition it's the main subject it's also the spiritual head is also a deity which is why we call on it because it is greater than this physical this um this physical this physical, I beg your pardon, this physical one. It is the one that has acquired, if applicable, several lessons from several lifetimes. And it, it, it is much greater than just this one that stores memories and thoughts. And so it is a, it is a greater deity than any other deity. Any other deity. It is the only that should be reverenced first. Because it is the one that has lived this... Uh, many, it is sort of the guide for this one, this physical one, that this one. So the things that you think, the things that you process, the memories, it is this, the spiritual head that acquires, that, that knows more than this one knows that comes to your rescue, that defends you and says, um, maybe don't think that way maybe don't do that maybe this isn't right you know it is it is like a it's it's much greater anyway than what we're thinking if we're just thinking with our physical head with our brains and it is this the higher self the the spiritual head that says um maybe that is not right maybe this is it pa the bigger picture part of the bigger picture it can protect it can defend um it can elevate and it should be pampered and cared for so they are you know uh i'll put some songs at the end if i can find that clip there's really no deity that would be more important to you than Yori. And I think that is why you can't really call Ifai religion. I mean, except you're worshipping yourself. It's sort of like a spiritual path. Um, you know, there's more focus on the individual self than honoring somebody who has done their own duty and left. You can, you can get help from these deities there, there are physical aspects of those deities that lived um, earthly lives, you know. But Oshun wasn't really calling upon Oshun when she had her human incarnation. If you get what I mean, Shango wasn't praying to himself. Uh, yeah, it was. Well, one second. Uh... Shogo wasn't calling upon Shogo for assistance. Um, they were honoring their own selves, their own ori, their own higher selves. That is very much the greater, the greater deity than any other deity. You know, we can call on them for assistance. You, they also called for as ancestral assistance. Um, Many of the people we now regard as like old, old ancestors, they also, they lived with in the same era. 
and and dull but the the most of the focus was on was on their own their own ori their own cells it was very much on their own cells and what they knew and, and i think that is why they were very the ones that were creative were creative the ones that were uh powerful were, they just didn't spend too well what i'm trying to say in essence is they just didn't spend too much time on religion oh this is how you must do it and this is how you must that was why they were able to come up with a lot of things a lot of things they were able to discover a lot of things many things that now check out uh scientifically and all that we've always known you know science may prove it but many things we, we've always known so they they spent their lifetimes wisely is what i'm trying to say so okay when you spend 50 percent of your 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 time on earth just honoring spending oh how do i do this how, how how do I do it exactly this way or without necessarily wanting to walk your own journey to experience earth for yourself without like checking oh how should I experience earth without necessarily listening to your own self the the ori that has the uh manifesto the plan the guide for what you're supposed to do if you're like checking around then you're missing the point this is like basic your robust spirituality i'm sorry I've, I've not really delved into like teaching spirituality so i'm a bit rusty with how to present my thoughts but maybe that would be a, a video for another day i'm saying all that to say that the calling ori head is quite underwhelming for what it really is um for the Yoruba perspective. Now, for translation purposes, what are you going to call the Ori if it is not the head? <laughs> it's this is the part of ourselves that we call the head. This is also the part of um their cells that they call the head, the English, and in, in other languages, this part they have names for it. But it is also crucial for us to think about it from a Yoruba perspective, a lot of the things that people would not pay. That is why I think it is important to understand the language to some degree, um, either before embarking upon learning, upon acquiring information regarding Yoruba spirituality, even either knowing the language to some degree or actively learning the language while learning the spirituality because just by knowing the language a lot of things that sound you know deep or that will already be implied from the words themselves in and of themselves yoruba words are not the same as english in essence because i may make a hundred more videos of this kind but just know that there are more and more words um 95 percent of the yoruba vocabulary uh argu arguably different in and of themselves from what is in the the equivalent in the english dictionary as far as what they mean in and of themselves you know they might be equivalent as far as okay this is what we call this this is what we call that but regarding meaning and depth and application and practicalization they they may differ okay uh if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask if you want me to uh explain it the concept of ori a bit further maybe when i've I didn't really make notes on it, but maybe when I've given it some thought and found a way to sort of define it in a, in a, in a better way, in a very digestible way, if you want me to just explain in the comments further or something, or if you get it, which, which would be great, but if you want me to say anything else, uh, please don't hesitate to, to let me know. And if you have a question regarding something else, 
uh, please don't hesitate to ask. <laughs> Sometimes I don't get to the comments because of how, you know, from my job to other things in my life and then I make videos and then I was just thinking about it that there are many comments that I've not responded to and if I just sit down and start to respond to them I can spend 24 hours um, but don't many times I just you know reply as quickly as I can so don't don't worry I'll get to it when I can <laughs> I typically always get to it or like if it doesn't require comments or something um, feel free and for the emails that I've not responded to I'll get to it <laughs> oh my goodness uh, <laughs> anyway thank you so much for watching thank you for your time and bye for now